The season has just started and some players are already on 40 bazillion LP. Look at this absolute crazy person with 31 LP after day one in season 13. Playing and abusing the most broken jungler in the game, Lee Sin. I wonder, when will this champion finally get nerfed? I do wonder truly, because I don't think it will ever happen in a proper fashion. We see him starting with a juicy croc start, and as per, as per usual, we can use this time with the jungle clear for some extra information. You'll probably use the Q into the red buff, yep. Just make sure to travel around the map a little bit faster. And what about the runes he has? So first off, he's running a full pen setup. He's going for Boots of Dynamism for armor pen, having sudden impact as well in the rune department, as well as going for Yuma's Ghostblade. For those of you who are not aware, Yuma's Ghostblade is a so-called light item. This item has been buffed, and after watching this, you'll understand what to do with this champion, and you'll go kind of crazy with it. So, the item has 15 armor pen, but the effect of the item has been a little bit changed, or well, buffed. So now it gains another 5 to 10 armor pen depending on your level. So you have an item that grants you 20 to 25 armor pen, plus armor pen boots, plus having sudden impact. How crazy is that, to be honest? What does happen to you if this champion hits you? Because Lee Sin as a champion already one-taps you if he just jumps into your face, kicks you, uses his first ability, and, well, dashes again. And there's no much, not much counterplay because you even die through exhaust if this champion is remotely in the game. And uh, first strike just grants him too much gold. This Jace doesn't even know he's dead yet. It's the minion with a first ability going for the Jace. Even dash behind him just in case this guy is flash. Pushes out the way for his top laner, making sure the wave will bounce back soon, making sure there's no downside for his top laner. And now he's on the hunt, he spots the Talon here. But what is he trying to do? He's looking for another proactive play here, telling his team to basically cancel their recalls, maybe going for something very proactive. He goes for a flash, kicks into the face, jumps in, gets a kill here. Oh, this was not worth for them, the enemy team was kind of ready for this play. Um. Wait, well, to be honest, for him probably it was worth, for his team not so much. Because uh, he got so many items from this this play. Like look, he has completed straight at Dirk with, for the armor pen, he has boots of dynamism, and he has sudden impact. So right now, he has, what is it, 10 plus 10 plus 13? So he has 33 armor pen, correct me if I'm wrong. Which means, most of the champions in this game right now have like 15 armor against him or something. And the Ziggs doesn't even know what's going to happen to him. Mr. Ziggers, goodbye. You are gone. Well, look, this guy just dealt so much damage to this guy in, in a matter of seconds. It, <laughs> yeah, we, we love Lee Sin. We, we love this type of damage. But the enemy Ziggs already identified correctly. Playing mages is the way if you want to have fun or mage like 80 carries. We are back to the old times. Nice kick by the Lee Sin. Nice combo by them. They just take the enemy mid lane into the next game. Just play safe, bro. And this happens so many times in current Wild Rift. You have a champion like Lee Sin who just walks under your mid lane tower, kicks you into the face, and you just die. And what's the counterplay? Uses the surroundings to his advantage, going for other camps here with the first ability, trying to go for like a cheeky play, and still instantly going back, utilizing the surroundings. The Lee Sin is really trying to accelerate the game as fast as possible. Now with the downtime at hand, he's trying to pick up some camps, and after this, like, look at the item he has soon. Look at the item that will be completed. If you think he had damage before, look at his damage now. Because when he just attacks someone, you will quickly realize how much damage this champion now does. Like, imagine, we buffed some items in the past by, like, yeah, we give them two armor pen. But what about an item that was already the most used and most built item in the jungle with Yuma's Ghostblade, and we buff it by 5 to 10 armor pen for zero reason? How is this remotely a good idea? Oh, Mr. Zix caught in a rotation, Lee Sin finds him, the Sona is also getting instantly popped, that's what you get for picking Sona. Scaling warfare, they say, oh no, the Zix, did you see the damage of just QQ? Yeah, that is very cool.
and you'll always see the Lee Sin going absolutely crazy on the map while the enemy talent is trying his best to mitigate the damage done to his team by going around the map and taking down plates. Jay's on the run here trying to zone the Lee Sin from the Herald but it's just impossible to do so. Smite in 4 seconds so there's no worry, there's no steal gonna happen. And this overall aggression is so important, just see an enemy overextend, punish them instantly and then go for proactive plays, looking for more and more damage. But if you look at all the items he has, he has so much damage, kicks him into the face and instantly kills the person. Tell him will probably pick him up, yep he will, but still, look at the damage. And for you, those of you who say, just Zonia's forehead, if you get kicked, like any type of knockup or hard CC, will make it impossible for you to uh, cast Zonias, which makes one certain combo for some champions pretty OP with the, um, what is the knockback? Repulsa, the Repulsa enchant. For example, if Rengar jumps you with ult and repulses while he jumps you, he can knock you back and then he might deny you Zonias and you just don't, just die. Because your reaction time at the beginning wasn't fast enough to react instantly upon being jumped, like him leaving stealth and jumping. So you just die. But now we enter the period where his team is probably two ahead, or he is two ahead, so it gets very weird. Like, there's one and a half minutes until Harold is uh, dissipating. And what are they doing? Look at them. What are they doing? Okay. <clears throat> okay, I, I think I understand. Okay. So they want to take down the Nexus shield so they can end the game on the next push. They still have Harold available, so they just need one good play and they can end the game. It's a very interesting idea, plus disabling Nexus Shield very early on is a very good thing to do. And inting now, to be honest, is not even that bad because you deny bounties on the enemy. Like, you, you don't stack up these objective bounties. Talon jumping onto the Lee Sin, look at the damage of the Talon. Nice kick by the Lee Sin, instant combo with the Yasuo. Zix ultimate throwing in, survives with a sliver of HP. Buying teleport, looking for another proactive play, going in for the teleport. They really want to end this game. The Zoe just instantly Zonia's as talked earlier, but the damage is just too goddamn high by the Lee Sin. And look at them. They just force it down mid lane. They just don't care. But sadly, Harold has been nerfed in the past, so it probably instantly dies. It, it should instantly die upon dashing Nexus. Yep, it does. It's changed 10 years ago. And now we're having a little bit too much fun here because we're just not playing the macro game anymore. But it's a very interesting idea. I, I like the idea of uh, going for the mid lane tower and quote unquote dying on purpose. Well, they didn't die on purpose, but they died. And this will deny objective bounties, to be fair, which is, I think, not a bad choice because objective bounties are goddamn broken and giving away one or two kills is not the worst if the enemy can't do anything with it. But this is getting out of hand quite, quite insanely fast, as you see. So what could they have done better? Um, they could have gone, they could have taken mid lane tower, yes, to disable Nexus shield, then place Herald on the top side for playthings, and then they have to basically wait for Nasher to spawn, and then they can end the game with Nasher, because 12 minute Nasher usually doesn't end you the game, but with the inhibitor or the Nexus shield already being down, it's a different story. Uh, and they have a big issue, like, if they have Ziggs on enemy team, it's very, 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 very difficult <laughs> to end the game, because it's simply not possible. Uh, he just throws his bombs on cooldown, if he throws his bombs on cooldown, what are you supposed to do if you don't have any Giga Heart all in, or your minions instantly die? Because he can just stand in, inside of his fountain and chill. Now the talent goes onto the Jags, Ziggs throws his ult, misses the ult, damage coming in from so many sources look at the look at the aoe control by the enemy team this is what i mean it's so difficult to play into them right now the enemy has gotten so much gold which made the game so much more difficult to play whereas um if you play for objectives only and bait them into you by having vision control in their jungle rather than running at them at the tower, you can basically just kill them. Because if they, they have no way of denying Ornold, and the Ornold will guarantee Ezreal ult and Yasuo ult to hit, and maybe the Lee Sin even gets a beautiful lineup. Not only this, the Jax can just flip on the side lane and enjoy his time there. 
So rather than playing the game with their brains, they just they just try to be like fist fight city. So I think it's very important to always remember you do not have to win the game through just running at the enemy. You can use neutral objectives to your advantage in the future to get the enemy to come to you. And if you can't siege against them, take away enemy jungle camps if you can to just pillage everything that's available to starve them so they get as little gold as possible. The downside of the mid lane inhibitor being down this early however is that you lose one lane of income and the enemy gains one lane of income. And that will actually hurt you in the long run if you can't use this to your advantage. So they had like so many minutes of free mid lane super minions and nothing came of this outside of disabling the next shield. So was it truly a good idea to do so? I honestly think no. If you cannot realistically close out the game fast enough, taking the middle inhibitor is going to hurt you more than it helps you. And I would rather not do this than putting myself into a spot where the enemy team with a lot of scaling champions gets a lot of free gold and EXP. Enemy is very much aware of what is happening around the map. The Talon comes around the corner, goes in for a quick combo. Nice Zonias and Kiki, but the Lisa will certainly fall. Tries to flash away, but the enemy has too much zone control. Now the Sona's ultimate is popping off really well. Oh, she has uh, harmonic echoes. That's a crazy item. Damn. But yeah, with the enemy utilizing all of their AoE capabilities to kill the Lee Sin, they now lack the ability to kill the other teammates of his. So... Um, if there's a fight happening where multiple people are still alive and just one person dies to the entirety of the enemy's arsenal of ultimates, they will still win. Now Nasha has been finally spawned and we'll finally see the objective fight we were all waiting for. So the last six minutes were just basically an intro of what we were hoping to happen to close this game out. On jumps from the corner, Ezreal even shifts over the wall. They all try to just instantly kill. They are just a hive mind. Just look, go, look, go. Jax is splitting. Jax has to wait in the wings, just needs to be ready to just respond instantaneously. Recalls in this frame, however, probably picking up teleport or fly them. And what is he supposed to do now? Does he actually go back to the bot lane? Or what's his choice here? Finally going back to the bot side of the map, I wonder if he has teleport picked up just so he can rejoin his team. Man, I have such issues speaking today, what's wrong with me? Not a good time, I'm not drinking enough, I keep on just tripping over my own tongue, it's not a good time. Needs to be careful because if he shows down here, like if any of you in chat is like, why doesn't he just kill him? If he shows there, I think the enemy team has a very good opportunity to just maybe go for the Nasher. And he didn't have information on many other champions at the same time. So maybe if the play extends, ooh, the enemy just told us they have no vision with the Ziggs ultimate. Because they only threw the Ziggs ultimate there to check. And now a vital cooldown is, is down. So they can use this to their advantage. Ooh, they need to be really careful. You're not allowed to do this. You need some of your ranged characters to clear this vault for you. The least is getting instantly punished for the slightest of mistakes. And that is what I like to see. If you make a mistake, you need to be punished for it. And on a European server, in general, people just don't punish you. And it's, it's very nice to see when it actually happens. Nice combo by the Yasuo, flashes in by the Orn into the knockup at the wall. They are bloodthirsty. They do go, they rely on each other, and they follow each other. They are a hive mind after all. They are not just some little Timmy, uh, Timothy toddler running around clueless, running into a wall and dying to literally minions. Nice secure by the Lee Sin, Talon is now here as well. Was this a QSS to avoid the kick? I think so. I think he just QSS the leasing kick. <laughs> Get owned. What a nice move by him. They're trying to deny this dragon even though it doesn't really do anything. Lisa not picking up the guardian angel. Tries to avoid death once and come back again to utilize another set of cooldowns for a potential next play. 
having still five on crafts available so there's still an option to just buy anything on demand having a jack is now dying in the side lane without anything being uh achieved he died too early basically he needed to die right now if something wanted to be achieved kicking sona into the face but sona is too tanky exhaust being placed down ultimate also dropping all the cc spells are throwing into their faces and he doesn't get the kill onto their sona now they have to back off have to take the consolation prize they get the mid lane inhibitor again but no will set their eyes on the dragon talent in the sideways looking for another collapse here That's, this could be another potential fight where things can go wrong but the sona will not have ultimate making it a lot harder for the enemy to be um, winning this fight. It's very, very difficult. Oh, Talon finds the least. He instantly flashes away, goes into distant, tries to device, places down the stasis to avoid certain death, but the Talon just simply does too much damage here. One of the other broken champions in the game. Nice combo by the Jace to just instantly pop him even lower off the GA. The Talon had his number, hunting him down. Now he has to recall. This will be a lot more troublesome than we thought it would be, and the next objective is going to be the Elder. So you see, this game was like brutally snowballed until the sixth minute, and because of the mistakes that were committed from six to 12 minutes, this game extended so long. And rather than playing the game slow and controlled with all the things we have, we tried to fist fight, and this fist fighting turned into a, such a massive downside. Ooh, the talent, the talent knows, the talent smells, pops the spell shield, instantly kicks him, didn't QSS this time, and gets the Yasuo ult, but still survives and walks it off into the sunset. Now, the least in his 1 HP probably has to reset, cannot really go for this dragon, but he does. He needs to be really careful. Anything that touches him instantly kills him, and even though he has vamp, he'll slowly, just very slowly sustain himself. Picks up the Coffee Tama instantly with the power of the own passive. Talon is now here. Oh, this is such this is such a bad situation. The Ziggs dies, a lot of AoE damage being gone. Yasu dies as well, finds the backline, goes in for a quick little kill, survives with one HP, executes the Elder with a smite, and survives with one HP. Now the enemy is losing to the power of the Elder, and this game was a game of emotions, and the Sona is the last one to fall. And with this, we are at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out the channel in the description below. See you for more Rift Guides content very soon.